want to welcome you here to the Anointing Water Prayer Line in the U.S. Can you please begin with telling us your name and where you're from? Selena, and I've lived in Tri-Cities for about four years. And Selena, can you uh, begin with telling us your testimony? Um, when I came to Prayer Line last month, I was sitting in the back and I started to hear this voice inside my head that said, I love you, you don't have to do this, it's going to be okay, I don't want to leave you. And then I came up front to do, I was shaking really bad, and I like couldn't control it, and I came up front, and when they started to do the prayer line and started to pray, I started having all these thoughts racing in my head, and so I kind of tried to get in the back seat, and I pictured that the person that was there, I pictured Jesus being there and just using them as a willing vessel, and um so I spoke out one of the thoughts that I heard, and all of a sudden it was like, spiritually, I went in the back seat inside myself, and all these words started coming out, talking about, um, talking about, um, I make you spend all your money on drugs, and I cause you to have a lot of surgeries, and at that point, I had had like 20 surgeries. You want to tell about my neck? Okay, so we actually have a video of her being here the, uh, last month of her receiving deliverance. So if you guys can roll that clip real fast, uh, what she just uh, testified, saying that she took the back seat. And she, when the spirit came upon her, she just took the back seat and just started watching herself say these certain things. So uh, go ahead and just roll the clip. And we'll I am blessed. Defeat and failure are the things of the past. Begin, remain in faith and in prayer. Holy Ghost, fire in Jesus' mighty name. What is your name? What is your name? Whatever you want it to be. What, you, what have you done to her life? I took everything from her. I destroyed her life. What did you do to her family? I took them out. I killed them from her mind. I took them and I destroyed everything. What have you done to her health? In Jesus' mighty name, I command you to speak. What have you done to her health? I made her sick. You made her sick how? Many surgeries. Many surgeries? Yes. Are you the one responsible for it? Yes. Okay. What have you done in her finances? I took them all. You she took them tries, all. but I take them. I take them for drugs. For drugs. And so right now, how did you enter her body? Through her birth. Through her birth? Yes. Holy Ghost, fire in Jesus' mighty name. You have made a mistake for allowing her to come into this place. Right now, you're going to be expelled no. in Jesus' mighty name out of her body. I take authority over you over in Jesus' mighty name. And I command you, loose your grip. Loose your grip. Holy Ghost, fire in Jesus' mighty name out of her body now. Every single one of you, completely out. Holy Ghost, fire in Jesus' mighty name. Holy Ghost, fire in Jesus' mighty name. That evil spirit that was tormenting your life and causing you sicknesses and addictions has been expelled in Jesus' name. Say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And what you guys just saw was the anointing water prayer line that we had last month. Uh, can you tell us what brought you to receive prayer at the anointing water prayer line? Um, because I have had a drug addiction for 16 years. I was an IV addict and um, I had like immoral sexual thoughts that would go through my head. I committed adultery against my husband. I had a lot of unforgiveness in my heart for things that people had done. And most of all, I couldn't forgive myself for the things I had done although I knew that Jesus had forgiven me. And can you tell us with what we just saw, what was your experience like? Tell us what happened when, they, when you received prayer at the anointing water prayer line. Um, I just, I, I didn't, I didn't uh, try to say things that was myself. Like I said, I just sit in the back seat. Do you want me to tell about my neck? Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay, so you're saying that when you, those words that were spoken, were you the one to say that? No, not at all. It, I don't even talk with the accent that was on there. It sounded like a man. <laughs> okay. And a couple of things that you said was one thing was uh, you were coming here because you had a cyst. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about that? Um, for the last year and a half, I've had a cyst on my neck that was about this big. 
and it stuck out and I constantly was touching it and I couldn't get over it. So they did a, they did a, um, a biopsy on it about a year and a half ago to make sure that it didn't have cancer in it. And they said that it didn't have cancer. But recently I noticed that it felt like it was starting to get bigger and people could really see it and it was embarrassing to me. So I went, my doctor had did an ultrasound to measure it to see how much it's growing. And he scheduled me to go see a surgeon for ear, nose, and throat doctor to have it surgically removed out of my neck. And um, about two weeks before I came to the prayer line, I missed my appointment, so I didn't make it there. Well, after the prayer line, I went home, and about a week later, I went to touch my neck because I just constantly do that. And I realized that it was completely gone off my neck. Can you tell us real quick, how long did you have that cyst on your neck? For a year and a half. And the doctor said that the reason why the, you wanted to have surgery was why? Because um, I noticed that it was starting to get bigger, and so that's why they measured it. Okay, and can you also tell us, continue to tell us uh, what else, uh, what else happened after you received prayer? What other differences did you see in your life? Well, my, I talked to my husband about it too before because they had asked me to do my testimony. Um, and people around me said that my demeanor is a lot more calm. Before, I would have like a lot of a lot of voices inside my head is what I thought they were, but they were thoughts and they were they were as a result of demonic influence in my life. Um, and they were racing all the time and I felt like I was sitting in the back seat or in a chair and they were all around me. I don't hear those thoughts no more. I don't have that racing stuff in my head. Um, about the prayer line, well, after about, about a week and a half ago, I prayed to God and I asked him, I said, well, why, why do I still every now and then these thoughts come up in my head of things that really bother me? And what God told me was that, is that when you have demonic influence in your life and you continuously hear these, these demons talking to you inside of you, what you guys think are thoughts, they're not thoughts, they're demonic influence. And God told me that, um, he told me that the, de that the demon really was taken out of me. Jesus told me that, that they were gone. And that, um, that because they were in my life for so long, for so many years, that my mind was accustomed to hearing those things. So every now and then, them thoughts will come over me. And um, like I said, Jesus told me it was that they were gone. And he also told me that when you, when you guys get deliverance today for, and you get set free, that you have to put something back in your life. You have to read your Bibles. You have to pray. You have to find a church. And it's true. You do have to tithe. When you find a church that you like and you love that church, you want to give to that. That's what you, we learn about that. And before we continue to the next question, I just want to rewind real fast. Uh, also uh, confess that you had a drug addiction. Can you tell us a little bit before and after you received prayer? I was an IV drug addict for 17 years. Recently, I had made an abstinent for about 60 days from drugs when I came onto the prayer line. Well, it just, it consumed my life. I spent every single dime that I had on drugs and on methamphetamines, any kind of drugs I could get my hands on. Well, since the deliverance, it, I feel like I've never been a drug addict in my life. I couldn't possibly imagine. I want to say one more thing. Yeah. And also, I want to tell you guys, I've never looked myself in a mirror and told myself that I liked myself. I hated myself for years. And since I was delivered, I look myself all the time, and I tell myself that I love myself, and I feel it inside. Okay, and last thing is, is that you, you were saying that you constantly had thoughts about those drugs. Do you have any thoughts about that now? No, I can't imagine ever putting dope in my body again, ever. We thank you so much for sharing with us, Selena. You can take